Hello there guys, welcome to the next video. In the previous one, we have already seen how to go about setting up references and also how to take care of different uh, elements while creating the landscape. In this one, I'm going to talk about displacement and exactly how you're going to create your landscape itself, the method that I'm going to use. Uh, the first thing is uh, to understand that I'll be using displacements to create the landscape itself and I'll be making use of NURB surfaces to create them. So in this blank file, I'm just going to show how displacement is going to work and what kind of techniques I'm going to use before I actually go about and create the original landscape itself. So let me switch over to the surfaces uh, menu set and go about and create a simple NURBS plane. So I have a simple NURBS plane which I have created now. I'll go back to its attribute editor and uh, first thing I want to do is increase the number of patches. For now, just for this trial, I'm going to set this patches to be about 10. For the no, If you want the amount of quality of your surface to be higher, you might have to increase it. Now I've just gone about and scaled the surface. So let me give it a value which is easy to remember. So 25. So I have the simple NURB surface created. Now, not only this, uh, I don't want the surface to be extended throughout towards the edges. I want it to have a certain shape in the center. So to create that shape, I'll just go about and create a simple circle. So I'll create a circle and uh, I'll give it a number of sections. Let's say about 32. I'll tell you why I need more sections in a while. So I'll go about create this circle. I'll scale this up too and I'll pull this out a bit. I don't want it to be touching the surface basically. So I created a surface and a circle. Now what I want to do is cut out the surface using the circle. To do this within Maya, I can go to um, Edit NURBS. Yeah, Edit NURBS. In this, I have Project Curve on Surface option. I'll just go open up the option box for this. Let me reset the options here first. Uh, here you have different options called Active View or Surface Normals. How do you want to project the curve? Now, if I'm in a different view, like let's say I'm in this view, if I go out and set it to Active View and apply, you'll see the surface is applied in perspective. You can see that the curve is going in perspective. It looks like as if it's projected from this angle itself. I don't really want that. I want this curve to be projected straight downwards, straight onto the surface itself. So let me go ahead and undo that. Okay, and I've selected both these surfaces. I'll go set it to surface normal so that it's going straight across to the surface and apply. So now you can see the curve is applied straight downwards. Now I'm not going to go about delete history or do any of that. Uh, I'll go ahead do it later on. So let me just go ahead take this surf uh, curve. I'll move it down and just to show you what uh, the uses of having this curve right now. If I move this curve, you can see the curve on the surface moves too. Not only that, I can go about and change the shape of this curve and the curve on the surface changes too. So it's very useful. Now, and as you can see, because I have loads of divisions on this curve, I can give it a lot of details in the shape. If I didn't have so many CVs on the curve, it would be harder to actually give in any minute shape changes I wanted. So that's the reason I increase the amount of span on the curve while creating it. Now, I have a curve on the surface, but what is the actual use? What I'm going to do is go ahead, trim the surface so that I only have the inside surface or not the outsides. So let's go back to edit NURBS and I have the trim tool. I go ahead, just click on that. I basically get this wireframe view of the surface. What I want to do is click on the surface I want to keep and remove the surface I don't want. So I can go ahead, click anywhere in the center and that surface is what will be kept. So I can go ahead, click on this and immediately that is the surface will be kept. I'll go press enter and that's the only thing I get. <laughs> now there are a few issues with using this method. Like for example, uh, you remember that I just clicked somewhere in the center to get that surface. Now if I go ahead, select this curve and move it so that it goes about towards the center. Now basically what I did according to the history in Maya is that I went ahead and clicked here which is the center and I basically told I don't want this area. So you, when you're clicking um, anywhere in the surface with history on make sure to remember click in an area which you know you don't really want even in the future. So I know I might uh, be making use of uh, shape like this. I'm not yet sure. So I don't want to go ahead and click anywhere there in the center. So let me go ahead and do this. I'll undo the trim. 
I'll select this once more. I'll come back here, trim tool. I know that the edge of the surface is definitely not going to be used. So I'll go ahead, click here and I'll hit enter. So now I have only this surface. Now what I can do is go ahead to the trim surface options. Okay, let me just find it here. I'll just go to trim surface options and selected option is set to keep, meaning whatever I've clicked has to be kept. Instead, I can tell Maya to discard the surface I've clicked. So clicking discard will remove the surface there. So now, no matter what I do, whatever shape I give, unless and until I actually pull this out to that extent, it's always going to be kept in the center. So this is much easier to work with and I don't have to worry about what is going to be deleted in the center. So this is the first step. I got this. Now I can go about edit this NURBS circle and whatever I do to it, that is going to be applied onto the object over here. Now, I have this surface. I want to go ahead and apply a displacement on top of the surface. And the easiest way to do that is using material displacement. So let me go about apply new material. I'll just go about and use a simple blend material for now. Now with the blend material, uh, and make sure even though you have so many uh, history attributes, I'm not actually deleting history. If I do all of my attributes, the curve which I have said everything will be deleted. So I don't want to do that. I'll go ahead, turn off auto load selected attributes in the material so that even if I deselect the object, it's not going to be deselected. I go ahead and click output connections so that I go back to the blend shading group. So here I can apply my displacement. I'll open the option box and I'll apply a simple 2D texture and noise is the best one to use because it gives you loads of options. So I've just simply applied the noise displacement. But as you can see, applying displacement, you can't really see what's happening. But if you go ahead and hit render, you can see what's going on. But this is not really the best method to work because you can't really see what's happening in the viewport. You always had to go hit render or you had to set it to IPR and IPR has a tendency to crash. So instead, what is the best method is select your op object. I'll go ahead and convert that to displacement to polygons with history. Uh, this option is available under modify, convert displacement to uh, polygons with history. Just select your NURBS and you can do this. So as you can see, I basically have the same result, but with the polygons now. The only issue with this option is that you can see it looks really flat even now. Only when you select the object, you know that the mesh is three dimensional. The uh, problem you're having right now is all the normals are still locked on the surface. So let's go ahead to the polygon menu set now. Let's go to normals and tell unlock the normals. So as soon as you unlock the normals, you can see exactly what's happening with the surface. Now for working with displacement, till you actually get the results you want. I suggest having hard normal edges like this because you get to see exactly what's happening much easily. So just select it. Let's go ahead and um, go to the displacement material for this. I'll just go ahead, reload and go to shading group. Apparently it's not showing here. So let's go render attributes, hyper shade. And here I can go ahead and select the noise, load its attributes. Now I have the noise attributes and if I go ahead and start changing options, you can see it's immediately reflected here in my viewport, which is the best thing possible. So now I can go ahead, change options, see exactly what's going to happen and then decide whether or not I want it. So first off, I want to decrease the amount of ratio I have. So I get more peaks and valleys. And next also, I want to go ahead, increase the amount of depth so that I get a lot of variations. Another thing you can, uh, you might want to do is hit three on your keyboard with the mesh selected. So that gives you a lot of smoothing. So it tells you exactly how it might look. Also, another thing I can do is scale the mesh. Uh, you can obviously increase the displacement scale, but I like to just scale the mesh because it gives me much better results. Now I have this, but a couple of issues with what we have now. I want the displacement to be maximum in the center and I want it to fade off towards the edges because I don't want to go about and start editing this or try to get a seed value which gives me only the least heights at the edges. I don't want that. So for that reason, having the noise modifier the only one in displacement is a bad idea. So let's go to the hyper shade now and I'll go ahead and edit a few things. I'll go ahead first bring in a ramp. I'll just take in this ramp and put this in as my, okay, what's 
Okay, I have taken in this RAM and I'm going to set this RAM as my uh, displacement value in the displacement shader. So let's go auto load selected attributes. I go shift, click and drag there and here out color, I'm going to set that to displacement. Okay, so out color is set to displacement and I only use one color which is the red color for displacement. The reason I'm going to use only one color is because displacement is a single value attribute. It does not have three different values. So I need to make use of only one attribute from here. So I've set out color red to displacement. Let's close that out. So now my ramp is going to be going in. I'll just go ahead, remove a couple of these values. And it's not easy to understand what's going to happen if we just have black or red or anything as such. So I'm just going to give black and white values in the ramp rather than red and black values because it's much easier to see. And anyway, white already has red, in, red inside it. So given that, and if I come out, you can see that displacement is actually working. My well, plane is actually slanted. That's because of the ramp displacement. Let's go change the VRAM to something different and you can see what results we have. So we have the mesh which is going across in this uh, radial ramp. We can go ahead and give it different values here. What I want to use is a circular ramp. Now when I give that you can see the displacement value changes from the center to the edge and not only that I can use different ways of this change. So you can see exponential up, exponential down, different one gives me different values. Now what I can actually do is go ahead and manipulate exactly how I want the displacement to work from the center towards the edge. So now I want the ramp and the noise node to work together. So the way I can do that is using the layered shader. So I'll take the layered texture and here I'm going to first add in the noise value which I already have. I'll remove the color value which is present. I'll go back to the displacement. I'll uh, shift, middle click, drag the layer texture onto the displacement. I want the out color any single one value to go to the displacement value. So as you can see, my noise displacement is back again. So the noise is the one going to my layer texture. I want to use this ramp now. So let's go ahead back to the layer texture. I'll take the ramp, apply that. So ramp comes after my noise and with this ramp I don't want it to be on over because it really removes all the values I have. So I wanted to go ahead and set it to multiply and as soon as I said that you can see what happened. In the center the amount of noise is very low and as it goes towards the edges it increases. But what I want is the reverse of this. So I'll come back to my ramp. I'll reverse the black and white values I have. So as you can see the noise fades off as it goes towards the edges and that's exactly what I want. Now I can go ahead start bringing this black in so it really smooths out the edges of all that I have here. Not only that I can change the exponential values here to get it exactly the way I want so it looks more natural. Not only this I can also go ahead and increase and add a little bit of noise so it gives me a bit of variation and it does not look very clipped out. So now I have this. Now I can go ahead select my curve which is here at the bottom and I can actually edit this. I can go ahead change the values on this. Obviously you can't see the values applied immediately because history is going to take a bit of time to actually understand what's happened. So let's just change the values here first. I'm just adding this in. Obviously I have my uh, my soft select on which is bad so I just removed that. I'm changing this. I'm just pushing things in right now. I'm trying to create variations. Oops. Okay so that is done. Now I can go about and make some huge change on the displacement attribute or any as such and that should update my values. Okay, apparently it's not taking it in. Okay, let's come here. Okay, so I just changed a bit of displacement value and you can see the entire landscape has been updated to it and now I have this displacement applied on the object itself. As you can see the object is very smooth. It does not have that rough looking terrain that landscape are supposed to have. So what I can do 
is go ahead and apply bump mapping to get the additional level of detail. So to get the bump mapping, I'll go back to my hypo shade and let's bring in my blend material. I'll bring that in. And this is the material which is applied to the object anyway, some material attributes. And with this in, I can go to the bump mapping and apply what I want. So let's go apply again a noise node on top of this. As you can see, the noise is quite big, it's huge and it does not look very good currently. So let's go in. I'll go ahead and decrease the amplitude like we did previously. Try to get all the details in and I'll increase the depth max to get as much detail as possible. And I can go ahead and increase the ratio to get a bit more detail in there. Not only that, I need to go ahead and reduce the amount of bump because having too much of it is as bad as having nothing. So I'll just reduce that a little bit. So now with this, if I hit render, this shows me exactly what it might look like. Also, I don't need the hard surface edges. So let me go set normal angle, apply and close. Now, if I hit render, this is the kind of surface I have and it looks okay. It's not exactly that great. Um, one thing I can do now is in the noise values, instead of having below, I can go ahead, set it to Perlin noise. And this gives me a much better looking noise, especially for terrains. So let's go ahead, edit that a little bit. Go to the noise attributes. I'll reduce the ratio so that the variations are reduced a bit. And now hit render. And that looks pretty okay. Now also another thing I can do is just hit smooth on the surface. So now I have a terrain, complete landscape which is set. All I have to do is apply some texture on it and I'm ready to go. Also note that I'm using Maya software renderer right now. If I go to mental ray, the smoothness of the mesh is going to be considered and it'll go ahead and, oops, mental ray. And it's going to give me a much better looking result. So here I have obviously reflections which is not that great. So you get the idea. So I have all these details coming in. I can increase the quality of the render and I should be good to go. So that's it for understanding how to create this landscape terrain. Uh, in the next video, I'll actually go ahead and create the same landscape in my reference file so that I can go about and uh, align it and set it up properly to be made use of. So I'll see you in the next video.